Hey folks, Joe DeSanto here. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do journal entries in Quicken. Journal entries aren't a standard um, function in Quicken, but I have a workaround and a way to put them in that works really well. So if you've been wondering how you can possibly do a journal entry in Quicken, this is the video for you. I'm Joe DeSanto, by the way. I'm an independent CFO and business consultant. I actually spent most of my career in Los Angeles building a few multi-million dollar businesses, and I've since semi-retired, and now I help other uh, businesses and individuals manage their money and plan better for their future. So if you're interested in small business, personal finance, and real estate advice, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Hey there, I'm back. Joe DeSanto, this tutorial is about creating journal entries in Quicken. This is a little bit, you know, intermediate and probably, you know, if you don't do any bookkeeping at all, you probably don't know what a journal entry is. But a journal entry is essentially a way you can move money from one account to another in your financial software as, as kind of like a background task. Now, something like QuickBooks has journal entries as like a built-in function. Quicken does not have journal entries as a, a built-in function, but I basically jimmy rig, so to speak, for journal entries in Quicken, and I'm going to show you how I do that here. So this is a uh, just you know tutorial file I have. <clears throat> You'll see I have a bunch of just basic accounts that appear on the left. There's not a lot of activity. I just did a video about journaling in your paycheck into Quicken and how to do that correctly. Uh, so that's what we see here. But to do a journal entry that's not doing split data entry on like an actual transaction in an actual account, this is how I do it. So I create an account that I hold my journal entries in. And what I do is I'm gonna create um, just a generic asset account, okay? I'm going to call it journal entries. And if you've watched my videos on accounts, ultimately, to some degree, every account's sort of agnostic. Where it ends up living, you know, in the hierarchy is more a matter of labeling. But um, I'm just going to leave it in the personal transactions for now. And being it's an asset account, it's going to pop up over here under property and debt. Oh, there's a few more questions here and say, is this, is there a loan on this? No. No. Okay. So you end up with this asset account and I'll show you, we can kind of hide this if you think, oh, that's annoying. Then I got to have that random account in there, but I end up using it a lot because I do, you know, journal entries a lot. So it's not necessarily bad to have around. Okay. So in journal entries here, um, we're basically going to just create transactions that have a $0 net result. And I'll show you that, but I uh, always, for any new account, all accounts have basically a register. I just put on uh, two line display because that's how I like it. It reminds me of an old school checkbook and I always take the amount thing off. So it's just have it. So, okay. So I got my journal entries account, you know, it thinks it's a, any old account. So it puts an opening balance uh, transaction in there. You can delete that if you want. So I'm going to use uh, just for demonstration purposes, uh, this report I had up here. Uh, do Oh, so I had a saved report, and as always, if you have a saved report and then you add a category or an account, when you open that saved report, Quicken's going to ask you if you want to include that new account in the reporting. And you would have to because if you didn't, your journal entry wouldn't show up in your reporting. So I'm going to hit OK, and then I always just save those automatically. Okay, so I have this one report that essentially shows... you. Know, the only data that is currently in this file, which is this info about my W-2 income here. It's from a mock W-2 uh, pay stub. But it shows we have $4,000 of income and then you know we paid some taxes, okay? So let's just say I wanna like make an adjustment to this setup. Like I wanna, I realized at the end of the year like I, my federal tax amount was off by like 
five dollars and that and it should have been my state ta you know my state tax amount should have been five dollars more my federal tax amount should have been five dollars less so I want to fix that but I don't want to go through all the old previous transactions to do that so this is something you could use a journal entry for so essentially what I want to do is add five dollars to the federal and minus it from the state okay so we're gonna do we'll do a journal entry we'll call it uh, paycheck tax adjustment okay you can call it whatever you want it's gonna have a zero dollar um, net result so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a split here we're gonna find the transaction that I um, mean the category that we want to adjust okay we said we wanted to I think take five dollars away from the federal category and add it to the state category okay so in general thinking you would say okay I'm gonna take money from out of this put it into this so I would minus it out of that and I would add it to that and that's why I used minus now fair thinking when it comes to something like QuickBooks that has journal entries built in as a function a journal entry is always the you know the credits and debits are already always organized in a certain way and it's consistent the problem with my little Jimmy rig is that in Quicken generally you would have a transaction that is a you know a credit or a debit natively and then when you go in to do the splits depending on whether it's a credit or a debit your positives and negatives might act in reverse and I know that's sort of complicated uh, and probably going to be hard to follow for many so ultimately what I'm going to show you is we might have to after I hit enter and we see what the reporting is we might realize from the reporting it came out in reverse in which case we would come into our journal entry and just flop the positives and negatives so I am explaining a little drawback of the Jimmy Rig setup in advance I guess so anyway I'm gonna hit OK here uh, and then I'm gonna hit enter and then we go look at our reporting and see what's happened um, <clears throat> Actually, this is what I'm going to do to see the difference. I'm going to make this, or this journal entry, I'm going to make it for tomorrow, okay? Just so we can look at a difference here. So right now, I'm going to then change the custom, I'm going to change the reporting of this to be from uh, all the way through today so the report shows four thousand dollars we have minus uh, 339 of fed tax we have minus 264 of state tax what we're trying to achieve here is taking five dollars from the fed and putting it in the state so if our journal entry is correct once I show you the updated reporting we should have minus 344 in fed and the state would essentially go up or the negative would get less it would be what, 259 so I'm going to change the date here to include tomorrow to see if our reporting worked and it did so our journal entry now has basically taken put essentially made the fed tax we paid higher and the state tax we paid lower now if we wanted to do the reverse, we're like, oh man, that's not what I wanted to do. I actually wanted the Fed tax to be lower and the state tax to be higher. You could go into the journal entry where you could just go into your journal entries category or you could click in here and you're going to see the adjustment. We could go back to our splits. We could make this positive, make this negative. The balance is still zero. We save it go back to our report and now you can see we've added five dollars to fed tax and now the fed tax is minus 334 and the state tax is higher at 269 this is kind of a confusing example because <laughs> because the taxes are negative to start when I say adding it really makes the number smaller maybe I'll do one more example let's just say general with positive numbers um, I don't have any other data in this file but let's just pick I'm gonna pick 
two random categories. Uh, we're going to say home insurance, we want to add a thousand dollars to, and I don't know. Let's see. We'll say principal, we want to take a thousand dollars out. This actually, ironically, it might be a place you, want, you would end up doing a journal entry if you track your mortgage payment all year as the gross amount and at the end of the year you have to journal in how much of your escrow payment went to principal, how much went to interest, and so on. Enter. We're going to look at my report now. And we're going to see, even though I, I, you know, I didn't have anything showing up for home insurance or mortgage, now that I've put this journal entry there, I have a positive number going into home insurance and a negative number going into mortgage principal. So another quick example of how the journal entry could work. But anyway, the last bit is um, if you don't want to see this here, you can edit the account, go to display, and you can hide in transaction entry list and hide account name in account bar. Um, or you could just pick one. You might actually want to keep it in your transaction entry list and just hide it in the account bar. And what that's going to do is put the account into this little holding spot down here. I'll show you. Right here, more accounts. It should, puts it down there. So accounts you hide under any category, they add in this little extra more accounts um, area and then you can see all the accounts you've hidden. All right, so that is doing journal entries in Quicken. I will talk to you in the next one. Thanks.